much for joining. So as you know, and if you are not aware, no worry, I'm going to give a little bit a uh, briefing about the SaaS Guru platform. So we are learning, we are working, and in the same, we are going to achieve the certification. We are giving certification exam and we are showing it proudly. Well, sometimes it's difficult to understand the exact context of the exams. So SaaS Guru has this idea they come with uh, this solution, like uh, you have assessment-based learning and uh, summarized, I can say quick video series, you can learn topic-wise, and I can say all topics are based on the trailhead or uh, Salesforce certification examination guide itself. And it's gamified, like you have a small study groups, you are going to uh, check your score on the leaderboard and you are preparing for the, your certification journey with content, live classes, mentoring, blogs, projects, and you are growing in your career. So if we summarize, like SaaS Guru is going to supercharge your Salesforce certification journey, and it's going to be a bridge between your trailhead learning and your Salesforce certifications along with your work. So here you can see you are learning on trailhead. Yeah, you are preparing for your certification exam. You are working, you are getting ex experience. And here you are getting the learning material based on all those things. And you are growing in your career and you are going to achieve your certifications. If you are not part of this SaaS Guru or Community 8, uh, you can join the Slack group from the dashboard, like I am very much sure when you join this uh, session, you have access of the SaaS Guru dashboard, means we have login on the SaaS Guru. Now you can join from there. Uh, similarly, you can follow the SaaS Guru on the LinkedIn so that uh, you will get the all upcoming uh, webinar, blog, and uh, yeah, many more details via these channels. Well, today uh, we are going to talk for the topic best practices in the Apex development. Well, uh, I'm very much sure many of you are already Apex developer. I can say a few of you are uh, uh, still uh, thinking for be a uh, Apex developer and uh, you are already in the Salesforce ecosystem or I can say you are already exploring the Salesforce platform. That's uh, uh, why you are here. Once again, thank you very much for being here and welcome once again to our session. Well, what is today in this session for you? Let's set some context so I can say your time will be utilized with us. Okay, primary topic is Apex development, best practices and tips. But as you know, when you go for Apex, Apex is, I can say, last option. Firstly, you are going to cover lots of things with the no code, low code. So before starting Apex, I am going to give a quick overview about the platform application development. Uh, then I will talk something briefly about the no code, low code application development. Then I will go with the Apex Pro code development with best practices. And then I will love answering some questions. If you have any, maybe from this context and maybe from a specific, uh, like, you know, in your Salesforce career journey. Well, so, Let's get it started. And before that, feel proud. This time, again, this is a recent news I wanted to highlight here. Salesforce is marked number one CRM again from the last nine consecutive years. Uh, years. Like uh, from the last nine years, Salesforce is world number one CRM. And I am very much sure uh, many of you have already heard the news. And if not, uh, I'm sharing you uh, recently also Salesforce became uh, world largest enterprise apps company means if you are in the Salesforce ecosystem, I am very much sure uh, we have a bright career, bright opportunity ahead. You can uh, read the more news uh, about this with this link, salesforce.com on the news uh, blogs with this link. You can take the screenshot if you need it. Okay, before we go for topic, a little bit about me. Uh, you are already aware I'm Om Prakash uh, and I am a Salesforce MVP. Salesforce MVP is one of the, I can say, unique uh, recognition in the Salesforce 
uh, ecosystem given by the Salesforce Trailblazer community. And I'm really grateful for the Salesforce and this Ohana, this ecosystem. I am uh, MVP from the year 2020. Well, I am also founder and CEO of the uh, new company. I can say uh, it's Appy Crown, uh, Salesforce uh, Consulting, and we're focusing on the Salesforce uh, product development and as well as uh, uh, software training and all those things here uh, from the Bihar. You, if you want to connect with me, uh, you can connect with me uh, on the Trailblazer profile. Uh, this is my LinkedIn profile and uh, this is my FB page and this is your Twitter. I'm uh, available everywhere. If you have any query, uh, maybe during your career journey and during your work, I will be happy to guide if I can. Well, so platform application development. Like if we look for our tools and if we summarize, then we have no code, low code application development. It's a uh, browser based. Then we go for APIs uh, where we can connect with the multiple systems. Salesforce provides us the REST API, SOAP API, and we have query language like SOQL, SOSL. Uh, SOSL, uh, you can sort the multiple records and with help of SOQL, you can maybe find the details. Like, okay, I'm on Prakas. I need to find my mobile number and phone from the lead. Then, okay, I can query with SOQL, SOSL, where maybe Om Prakas name is available in the multiple record. I can access with help of SOSL. Uh, then we'll discuss something epics and pro code application development with best tips, the main topic of the today and LWC, you know, uh, for the building UI. Uh, and uh, earlier, uh, if you have already developed uh, with the Visual Force page and all our components, now we all are uh, learning daily something new in the Lightning Web components. Well, so browser-based, no code, low code application development. Well, I am talking here a specific for this topic because it's always suggestion if you are apex developer then firstly understand what is possible without apex code first right so you can see developers can build server side application from the browser without even writing piece of code what you can do from the point uh, and click from the uh, uh, ui like go to setup then from the setup menu, you can access multiple options and you can create a data model. Of course, database, we need it for any application, any enterprise applications. Then uh, data security, like, okay, I have a lead object. Who will access the lead records? Well, we can configure. Similarly, we can configure this for any of our objects. We have user interface, like you have to play with page layouts, you have to create some report dashboard, you can build without Apex code. Declarative logic, for example, flow, you are going to write your logic in the flow and you don't need to write code there. And then programming, uh, programming logic, programmatic logic, that is either a stored procedure, triggers, and of course, lots of Apex code. Uh, like as you are Apex developers here. So you are very much familiar. We are going to talk more about this shortly. Okay, so in the browser-based no code, as I told earlier, it's very easy. We can play without code with the page layouts thing. We can uh, customize the UI. We can customize the entire view of that uh, application, maybe rearranging of tab, rearranging of page layouts, re rearranging of fields, and uh, totally custom applications you can create for the customer's needs. Okay, suppose if we need encryption, like uh, I have some sensitive data in any field, we can access that even without coding from the platform encryption. We have encryption services there. Uh, we have features of encryption, multiple contexts. They're different topic, but just for quick info, you can do it without coding. Okay, we have validation rules where you are going to enforce your users. Hey, I will not get invalid data. Means if I my business has the requirement to get the best quality of data, I can filter those data with help of, help of validation rules. Like it will not allow uh, to enter, uh, I can say unused data for 
maybe uh, data is not helpful for me. I will not take in my uh, data storage and you can do it without even a text code. Formula field, uh, I can say admin love formula fields without writing a piece of code, they can access anything. Like yeah, anything in the context, we can access uh, maybe uh, some parent child fields, or I can say uh, if on the same object we have multiple fields, I need some some and calculations on the same object. We can access from the formula field, of course, and roll up summary field. Like if we have master details relationship between objects, even we don't need Apex code here, we can directly play with the roll up summary field. So as a Salesforce developer, as an Apex developer, we also need to keep all those things in the mind. And here, because we are also talking the certification context, I can say, if you are going to attend your platform developer exam, or maybe app builder exam, or even admin exam, I can say lots of context will be from the same, I can say. Uh, here is something about security and some use cases based on that. Okay, uh, I have to do uh, similar things. Means I have to validate ki how data, uh, I don't want uh, un like uh, unusual data, I can say in my org, there is some use cases. And in option, hey, uh, validation rule. Hey, this is from flow. And you have to choose, oh, validation rule. Validation rule is helpful for uh, enforce the, you know, integrity for my data. It's going to uh, follow my rules. Similarly, when to use roll up summary field and in your exam there is some question and in the option maybe apex is also there i think that's why i'm talking this topic also in our best practices because we are also focusing you should uh, very much clear for your exam uh, if you are preparing for any exams now in the same no code low code very beautiful things we have flow and uh, Learning flow, I can say maybe for beginners, it may be complex, but once you will explore, you will love it. Like I really enjoy learning on flow. And if you need uh, more, uh, I can say yeah, yesterday or just day before yesterday only on the SaaS Guru, there is flow session. And also I found in the SaaS Guru, there is a flow uh, learning session free available. Uh, you can go ahead, explore that. We have lots of trailhead modules you can learn from there as well. If you are stuck somewhere, you can reach out to me. I will be happy to help you in your flow learning journey or in your Salesforce learning journey. So here I uh, wanted to highlight either you are going to uh, use some screen for the users. You can achieve from the screen flow. If you have to write some automation, even when record is uh, deleted, you have to play uh, with some logic. You can write uh you can create record trigger flow like first option should be in your mind record trigger flow similarly for the scheduling for the platform event and even for the auto launch flow you can go with the screen flow first okay now why here we are going to do everything so either flow low code no code or even pro code we have to use our sandboxes or scratch orgs or of course if you are uh, uh, building some poc or maybe learning then you have your developer orgs so this is again important in terms of Apex development as well, or uh, I can say on the platform development context, attach orgs purchase, uh, versus sandboxes. And let's see some use cases. Okay, and it's also important from your exam perspective, if you are preparing for exams, uh, Salesforce certifications. You have to develop something. Yeah, you can develop in attach orgs, you can develop in developer sandbox, developer pro sandbox, if you have to, Use for QA, like you have to test your functionality as a quality analyst. You can use the Scratch org, you can use Developer org, of course, you can use Developer Pro, and you should also use partial copy. This is suggested approach. You are going to do integration testing. Then suggestion is go with the partial copy or full copy. Maybe you are doing integration, you need uh, more data. Maybe you need uh, more resources. Uh, that's why suggestion is partial copy or full copy. You are testing batch data, maybe you have bulk data, bulk records, and you are going to test then partial copy or full copy sandbox is suggested so that you will not hit any limit here. For training purpose, again, use partial copy. Um, it means you are building some applications and you are going to uh, deliver training to your end users. Yeah, partial copy is uh, suggested, full copy is also suggested. EAT testing, it should be in partial copy or in the full copy. Performance load testing. Yeah, go with the full sandbox because it's, it's talking about performance. And for performance, we need a full data, full functionality there. So session is full sandbox. 
for a staging, yeah, I think can say similar, but a staging, we are going to uh, give a staging demo to our client here, I can talk, or uh, maybe we are going to test everything before going live, you should go with the full sandboxes. And uh, just keep in mind, uh, you can relate this, you don't need to remember this, just you can relate this and you can keep in mind in your exam, there is some huge cases, hey, uh, uh, I am going to deploy my, uh, I have deployed, developer is deployed, all those changes, uh, maybe I'm going to uh, make my application live tomorrow evening, uh, one, uh, or maybe one after one week, I have to test uh, uh, it at a staging, where should I go? In the option, full will be there. Yeah, this is, uh, this is your options. And uh, this is also, you can keep in mind, uh, daily active scratch or allocation in developer sandbox six enterprise, uh, or we have, uh, I can say developer org, sorry, six enterprise 80, unlimited org, uh, inter unlimited enterprise, uh, Unlimited edition 200 and performance edition uh, 200. So this is something for the daily SPH or allocation and it can be purchased more, but by default, this is available. Now, uh, as we know, superpowers comes with super responsibilities, means these uh, decision making things are not easy, I can say, but once it will grow in your career, and you will engage in the real-time challenges, then of course, daily we learn. That's why we say it's lifelong learning journey and we always learn from each other. So here, let's think something. If you have to build some UI and that UI, if you, if you think this UI requirement is possible from my uh, lightning page or with help of dynamic form, then go ahead and simply create that. You don't need to go for flow screen or even LWC. And I'm very much sure every admin or even Apex developer also suggests, hey, let's create this like a uh, new lightning app or maybe a page uh, layout. Maybe uh, just uh, you don't even need to use any uh, pro code like Apex or maybe lightning web component or even you don't need to use flow, just use dynamic form. And in the dynamic form, if you, uh, you are thinking dynamic form, like in the dynamic form, you can dynamically add some fields in your page layout. Uh, even I can say in the app builder without going to the page layout edit options. So you can do this from there. Okay, if you need some additional logic, maybe uh, we need something more than available capability of dynamic form and lightning page. And how you will know that? For this, you have to explore this. You have to learn this, right? And then you feel, okay, this is not suggested for my use case, then go with flow or LWC. But now again, when flow, when LWC, here, if you have to build multi-page form wizard, suppose I need to create a form where I need to take the employee educational data, then next employee uh, employment history, then next, maybe some current info or uh, next, means multi-page, you can achieve from the flow very easily and you can save those in the records, okay? Then requirement is now, it is not possible from flow also because on the flow, uh, on the screen, it's something dynamic. Uh, maybe I need, I have to hide something dynamically on the click of button, I have to hide on the click of another link, I have to unhide, I have to show more data. Maybe I have to uh, bring some dynamic uh, values dynamic calculations there and that is very complex that is not possible in flow yeah build something in lwc and once you are going to use lwc of course for the back end you have to take care for the apex coding things so here don't be confused like okay if i need to do something in the lightning wave component and if i have to do something in the flow should I use the combination of both? Yes, even in the exam, I can say it will have this type of questions. So suggestion is yes, it's not always okay. Half thing is from the flow, half thing is from the LWC, then leave the flow, go to LWC. No, do the half thing from the LWC, do the half thing from the flow, means first preference should be flow. So just here, uh, the same example I can say, if you need to combine those, you can combine the same, okay. And uh, 
even you know uh, now you can also call your flow from the lwc from the winter 23rd right if you have a flow and in your lwc you can directly call that as well so session is go with the combination of both both powerful tools now i am coming on out slowly slowly you can see i'm coming on our original topic of the day that's called apex development best practices so let's discuss some huge cases and let's decide when to go for apex when to go for flow because i feel this is one of the most asked questions like many beginners and even uh, experts keep discussing these things so let's talk one by one same record field update let me give you example i have i have just created a lead record and i need to update something on the same lead record where should i go best possible thing is before save flow trigger here you don't need to do additional update it will happen in the before save flow trigger of course you can do the same from the apex trigger in the before trigger context but here if this is possible in the low code then suggestion is do it here after safe flow is not suggested after safe flow plus apex is not suggested so let me set the context what is this after safe plus apex this is i am writing a flow uh, i am creating a flow that is on the after safe flow context and from there i am calling apex action so that is this one okay this is after safe flow trigger like in the flow we have before and after context so this is after and this is okay apex trigger means from apex trigger of course we are going to call our apex handler handler and apex logic so same if you have high performance batch processing means suppose you have bulk uh, logic bulk data where should you go yeah go with apex trigger in the apex trigger uh call your apex methods and write the complex logic for your uh, batch you have cross object delete update read or i can say okay let me talk one example here once account is updated then update some a specific field on the opportunity so where should i go before flow not suggested not available even i can say why because here something is going to update on the account and i have to change something on the other object maybe here child object opportunity object so yes and each go with the after safe flow and that time you can choose that cross object from there you can do this from the after save plus apex action like if you feel okay i have to update some field i can do from the flow and i have some Fill updates, but there is complex logic. That logic I am not able to achieve in the flow. Then I can call action, and that apex action can update. So this is suggested. Apex trigger, of course, always suggested. But approach should be first priority preference. This, then this, then this. Okay. I have asynchronous processing. You can do in the after save flow. Like if you go in the after save flow, you have option. Hey, you want this in the uh, future uh, if you want to schedule this in asynchronous way you can choose that so in the after it is available it is also available in the after save plus action maybe after save flow and from there you can call one future method via apex action so it is available here apex trigger yeah always available you can see apex trigger you can everything you can do from apex trigger but hold on please look on these alternative be, uh, before going on the apex you have complex list, complex list processing. Uh, list, of, of course, I can, uh, you can think about the collections. And complexity means uh, just not a simple for loop. Like in the flow, we have loop. And on the loop, you can iterate the list. You can process some data one by one. But just feel, uh, just think, we have to take one element from list. Then I have some complex logic there. Maybe I have to calculate the uh, based uh, i have to take one element from the list then i have to perform some calculation based on maybe some sql query and maybe uh, some record coming from different object and if you feel okay if i will go in the flow maybe some complexity will happen maybe i will stuck in the border limits i have freedom to write code in the apex then suggestion is 
before uh, after safe flow uh, plus apex or apex trigger you have to give custom validation errors where we should go custom validation errors like we have validation rule for the validation but for the validation rule uh, maybe uh, let me give you example okay my amount uh, amount on the opportunity should not be greater than something if some specific criteria is matching you can achieve but now think i am i have to check uh, some specific criteria on three or four object maybe even on the two objects both objects are not even related and if you have to write some validation then you have to give the validation error then you can do it from the apex trigger and this is i can say very very important from the uh, either pd1 even pd2 app builder exams this should be very helpful these types of huge cases are there and you have to ch choose the options and again, this is not, you don't need to rem remember anything. Just you need to keep this in mind with the practical approach. Like as I was giving you one, one huge case. If you are going to apply those huge cases, if you are going to build those huge, huge cases, like I can say this huge cases, what is just an approach? Go and achieve the same from the before flow. Hold, uh, deactivate the flow, achieve the same from the apex trigger, during learning time, I can say, and uh, then, it is in your mind okay, this is possible from here this is possible from here and in your exam uh, and not only in exam in your real time uh, work on the real problem you can apply these things and you can design the best possible solution on the platform lots of discussions we have till now like uh, when to use uh, no code when to use code just a very simple if you summarize our discussions it's not that simple I'm telling it's simple, but still, it's not that simple. It depends on the requirements to requirements. And for taking these calls, you need skills. You need to learn flow and apex both. You need to understand uh, like uh, who, uh, which option is best approach as per our understanding, as per our experiences, as per available resources. Then, take the call and go ahead in your career journey accordingly. Uh, same concept like uh, here main takeaway is, if something is possible from custom, try with the uh, custom. If you think you, if you stuck somewhere, there is no any other way, go ahead and accept the higher risk and go to the more complexity. And here I can say Apex, writing Apex deployment, uh, deployment Apex, it's coming under the higher risk because, uh, you know, like when you are going to deploy your Apex code, you have to make sure again, test cases, test classes, and it's not quick changes. You have to go through with the deployment approach. But yes, we are Apex developer. We love Apex coding. So let's go and talk more about Apex development. And uh, here, either Apex trigger or flow or any automation tools, very important thing. I can say this, yes, this is uh, very much related to our topic best practices, understand the order of execution. When DML is happening, then let's think uh, on this diagram. I think I, this is my favorite and I keep using this in the multiple session as well. Uh, suppose uh, some changes is happening on records, then what happened? Firstly, original record. On the original record, changes will be override. For example, I am going to update the lead record. I'm going to change the phone. Then what happened? Phone value will be overrided with the new phone value. Then flow before will be up flow before save update will be run. And that's why you can see in the previous slides, um, multiple time I suggested go with the before save flow um, multiple time. In this case, like if you have same record, we are going to update that time. Then before trigger will run, then validation rule will, then duplicate rule. After that, record will be saved, but it's not committed, means it can be still rollback. Then Apex trigger will fire. After that, Apex triggers means here I can say, uh, your uh, record is not saved yet. Then we can say it's going to the after trigger context now. Assignment rules, auto response rules, then workflow rules. And now you know already workflow rule is now. Uh, you have, uh, yeah, our existing workflow rule is there already. But session is now go with the flow. 
and your workflow release or uh, workflow rule is already updating something if yes then again we four plus after triggers will run again process builder will run flow will run and if the process is, is going to update the same record i mean the cursor will happen means the same record that was updated here same thing will be going to update here then the cursor will occur after this like if okay the cursor is not occurring then escalation rule and entitlement rule roll up somebody and then it's going to commit in the database so i will suggest if you can take this screenshot and even if you can use the original resources that was here uh i will share this link as well at the end of the session in the chat or uh you can access this from the developer post uh resource page and uh, you can keep this uh, order of execution handy uh, the same order of execution in the much details in this image but you can see this image is uh, uh to zoom so what is suggestion take this link architect.salesforce.com slash fundamentals slash architecture basic you can take this screenshots and you can download this image and you can zoom out and you can read in the much details like uh, how order of execution is working and how it's going to impact in the different different uh, conditions something more about best practices and how we learn best practices maybe sometimes we learn from our mentors we learn from others experiences your colleagues your teammates your managers and we also learn from other codes right maybe if i am writing best code my colleague my team can write the best code so i will strongly suggest if you have not already then please uh, go ahead and install this in your org what do you mean by install here if you open this link github.com slash trailer apps apex recipes there is option to deploy the codes in your org and once we'll deploy the code in your org, then go to Salesforce org, go to apps. So what I'm telling, just you need to go on this link. Please take this screenshot. There is an uh, option to deploy those codes in your org. This is by Salesforce. Of course, you can see trailer apps. If you go here in your org, there is Apex Recipes app. Click on that. Anyway, I'm going to continue. So once you come in the Apex Recipe app, here from this code repo, we have multiple re Apex Recipes here. Let me open one example. Maybe that is collection recipes. And how it's come here? No worry. Everything is mentioned on this link. Very basic steps. Let me go with uh, collection utils. And here, you can see some code for the collections with the best practices with the proper command are available about this class documentation is available you can learn from there what is use of which method and also test class for this class what i want to say let me show you data demo data recipe demo recipe if you go here you can see example of DML exception, uh, example like try catch here for the DML exceptions, then DML is happening here before creating record, there is permission check. Hey, the, if current user can create the record and how it's happening in the can the user class, there is a methods and in that methods, logic was written to check if user has access to create if user has access to read so what i will suggest export the documentation look in the code and play with the methods of this code and see how they are following different type of best practices maybe i am also going to use dml they are also using dml but you can see every time they are going to insert something they're going to follow try catch and they're also going to check if user have access to create something or not similarly you can explore all these things maybe for the large data volume from the platform cache example from the schema from the security from the triggers point of view and i'm sure you will learn lots of good practices from here in this apex recipe so something about coding convention like uh, 
when you are writing Apex code, you have to make sure uh, you are following the good styling and structuring for your code, your team is going to follow that. You are following the similar principles. Maybe you are, uh, if you have your team has decided some naming convention, then you are going to follow the similar naming convention so that in the teamwork you can collaborate accordingly. You are following good naming convention. You are writing your code that is reusable and it will be for the future ready code. What is the advantage of the coding conventions? Yeah, it's follow the standardization like. Uh, it's very easy to debug your code. Means if your your team is following the same principles, same naming conventions, then it's easy to debug and maintain the code. Maybe I uh, in my code some issue is there. I am on the leave. My team can quickly go and check because they know which standard I am going to follow there. It will decrease the number of bugs and it will reward the high quality solution on the sales force and it will increase the customer satisfaction score. And this is our end goal. Right in our career, in our uh, even uh, you have a business or you have uh, you, you are working uh, uh, as a developer, as admin, or architect. Our end goal is yeah, our clients should be happy, and if clients' uh, score is good, I think we are doing good. What's next for this? Your team should follow the coding conventions. For the coding conventions, I covered three things: styling and structuring of your code, following the naming convention, meant, uh, writing the reusable code along with the consistency and some standard principles. And if your team is going to follow and team is agree for that, then of course uh, you are going to do good teamwork for that coding. Uh, maybe I am writing very good. Uh, I am handling exception with every DML. Maybe your team is not handling exception. Uh, they are not. Uh, following the best practices, okay, if I am doing DML, I should have try catch block there, then you can understand like half, we are, we are going to follow half thing only, but as team, we should deliver our best. Naming convention, if you are following naming convention, your every team member should know which conventions we are going to follow. Uh, if you are going to work in the new client org, you should check if they are following some naming conventions and if you want to use that, and if you have some better approach, then you can suggest them. Uh, Salesforce Success Cloud team has given this document. You can take this screenshot again. Very helpful. Bitly Salesforce naming conventions. If you open this, they are given some good example for the Apex, validation role, flow, trigger, and many things, many components, lightning web components. They have suggested what should be best possible name. You can follow these naming convention or you can plan your own naming conventions. For the Apex code, always we know these things, but it's still sometimes in a hurry and maybe in the delivery timeline, some developers skip this. And if Gordon limits is there in your code, I mean, uh, you are not delivering the 100% you know, uh, good functionality. So always keep Gordon limits in mind. Always bulkify your data. Uh, DML statements. If you are doing DML, think if you have multiple records uh, that time, make sure you are using a list for that DML. Uh, you are not uh, using the nested loop, that is suggestions, because it will consume your more CPU time. So if you have to use for loop inside for loop, nested loop, think about map, maybe think about wrapper classes, maybe think some other approach, how you can remove the uh, nested for loop. Always follow comments with good balance between quantity and quality. Like comments should be not just for formality. Comments should be for the good uh, balance. I can say if I am writing a method, if I give us some quick message, what is use of this method, then I can say that is following the good quant uh, quality as well as quantity. Maybe I'm writing five lines of code and uh, five lines of comment and this is not giving meaningful message, then it's useless. Always avoid hard coded ID, even in the flow or even in the Apex code, never do hard coding. Use Apex, uh, use custom labels, Apex metadata you have, or even custom settings and edge per use cases, but avoid the hard coding. Always optimize your logic. For this, maybe I can share a quick screen uh, to you uh, if uh, my code is handy. You can see in this code very quickly, here, uh, I have two for, uh, like one for loop. And again, here I have one for loop. This is, I'm not take much time. I can look uh, on the time as well. But here you can fill. I have one for loop. And inside that, I'm checking, hey, if email is not null on the lead, then I am putting in a map. 
And again, I have the same for loop, same for loop. And here I am going to update description. Okay. Now this is approach one. But here is one problem I can say. See, if this list of lead has 100 or 1000, maybe 1000 record, and here only 100 record, only 100 lead has email not blank. Good. Here, 100 time this if uh, this line will execute it. Now let's think about line number 17. Here, this will again execute 1000 time. It will execute 1000 time. Look, 1000 time because this list of lead, this list of lead, 1000 time again here. And if you look on this requirement, I'm not going to talk more, but just I'm giving quick hint here. I am going to use only this map. I'm taking something from this map. So my thought is this for loop should will be executed at 100 time only. Because if not null, then I am putting in this map. Look, I, I, am, I am sure if you are from a coding background, you are able to understand this. This map is holding email and I am getting email from that map means I am using only this one, like this map has 100. Then I am using this 1000 time means CPU time is going to increase. Now let's look on another approach. I have introduced one map here. In the map, I have added email and lead. And here in the for loop, instead of writing for loop on the list of lead, I am iterating for loop on the map key set. And here only 100 time this for loop will execute it both method is doing the same thing, but this is following the best practices. How you can check that, I will suggest go, go to your trigger, call this before insert approach. Once you will call this, uh, maybe let me show you quickly as well. Uh, if I, or just let me explain. Once you are going to execute this code, then what will happen in the debug log, you can check the CPU limit, right? You will see CPU limit consumption by this is less than this. I mean, CPU limit processing time. This will take less time, but it will again depend huge cases to huge cases. Like maybe I have 1000 record. Again, I have 1000 record. All record have email blank. Then I think CPU limit is same, but just think this huge case, then CPU limit time out time is here, less time will be consumed. So what I want to give message here, optimize the code and check from the debug log when you are executing the code, check properly which version of your code is taking less time and less resources and you are following the golden limit. You are also going to optimize your code as per the consumption of those resources. Break your methods in the multiple smaller methods modular programming here so that it will easy to maintain it will easy to find the error message like i have one uh, method i have written 100 line of code or maybe 1000 line of code if i have to find the issue i have to find the line by line if i have multiple methods for a specific functionality i can track okay this functionality is breaking this should be in the this method I think you can find it quickly and you can go ahead. You can fix the issue quickly. Also, you can reuse that method at multiple time. So break your methods into the multiple smaller methods in the Apex code. Uh, again, never use the DML statements or SQL query inside the loop because it will be part of Gordon limit. It will consume the more resources. Uh, if you can create the relationship between both objects, then create that so that you can minimize the number of SQL queries. Here, if you have to hold the map of ID and S object, maybe lead ID and lead record, then instead of writing for loop after getting uh, after writing SQL query, use this statement map ID, your S object, maybe lead equal to OBJ equal to new map ID lead and just SQL query here. It will be much faster than taking the record in the SQL query, uh, uh, taking the record via SQL query in the list and then iterating and then preparing the map. So this approach should be suggested. Now in the Apex trigger session is always use one trigger per, per object, always introduce helper methods, handler methods that can 
use uh, that can reuse the logic i can say in the handler method create multiple methods uh, in the handler class create multiple methods and call those methods from the trigger so that your trigger will be clean of course it will clean then it's very easy to track easy to maintain because the instance is one trigger per object so sometimes 4000 line in the trigger it's not good and if 4000 lines are in multiple methods in handler class it's good we can call those as per requirement if you're writing test classes then always follow good data prepare good data use the test data factory approach use the reusable methods in test classes so you can avoid the writing again and again same thing maybe creating same record again and again you can reuse the methods don't test with the existing data yes see all data to is last option like if something is possible where you have no option to create the record in test class go for see all data true otherwise by default follow the practices of creating the uh, good test data don't introduce the extra logic for test sometimes even when i was a beginner i was following this oh uh, sorry but yes <laughs> uh, hey, i can change this something in the apex class then test will pass my manager no 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 it will not test it approach right same thing don't introduce any logic in your uh, class for just access, uh, having the good test coverage. Always write good test class, use assertion so that you are able to check, okay, my logic is working expected. Don't focus on 75% of code coverage. Salesforce says, yes, you need minimum 75% of course, without it, it will not deploy. But your focus should not earning 75% of coverage. Your focus should be to cover the all possible use cases and very happily you will see oh it's more than 75 percent coverage similarly don't focus on exam scores focus on learning and focus on the preparations getting skills you will get more than uh, expected uh, scores in your certification exams cover as many lines of code possible if you are focusing on these things automatically 75 percent coverage is going to be there in the winter 23 uh, in the winter winter 23rd we have new uh, assert class and methods like assert.r equal. You can use this assert.isnull. If you have to check, okay, my string is null, then now you have assert.isnull. Earlier it was a little tricky, I can see, for the checking null with the assert uh, uh, for the previous system.assert equals. Now assert.isnull is helpful here. You can explore more on the winter 23rd release notes. Uh, we have also assert.is instance of type. And this is able to check which type of exception my uh, class is, my method is throwing. So you can use these new classes, introduce a uh, new class, assert, and new methods available in the winter 23rd. I have taken resources uh, from this. You can learn more with these links. Uh, you can take the screenshots. You can access from the official Salesforce website, from the trailhead. I have taken reference from there. Next steps, yeah, if you need any support, you can chat. So I can say SAS group support team is available here as well. Uh, you can complete the learning modules in your SAS group uh, that, uh, from your SAS group assignments and trailhead links are always needed. Trailhead is the best learning platform we say because it's built in the way like you feel you are working on something uh, real use case. Maybe you are working on super batch, you are working on some real use cases. You can check next class next session by the SAS guru uh thank you once again everyone for listening to this <laughs> from the last uh, i can say perhaps one hour i hope i was able to deliver some good value i, I was able to give some quick message